everyone, this is Julia Doherty from the Adventure Geek slash the Camino Talk Show. And today we're going to be talking all about the Camino from Real Pilgrims. And that's what it's about. At the end of the day, you know, you can read blogs and you can go on forums and uh, read articles and all the rest of it. But unless you're seeing the whites of people's eyes of true pilgrims who have actually walked this Camino, you don't really get what the, a sense of what the Camino is all about. And today I'm going to welcome on board Jackie Jarvis, who has a real story to tell. In fact, I think she's walked the Camino more than once, which I know she's going to share with us today. Um, I say I'm privileged to be spending time with the author of In Pursuit of Slow. I'm going to ask her, that's your sign, Jackie, to hold it up in the air. So In Pursuit of Slow, which I've read uh, a couple of times, actually left a copy as well on the Camino when I went this year. And she's also um, a co-author of another book called My Camino Walk, which is by Andrew Priestley. Andrew's going to be walking the Camino, I believe, next year. So, Andrew, if you're watching this, we're going to be getting you on the show next year. So, everyone, please give um, Jackie a warm, warm welcome. I've known Jackie for quite a while, actually, pre-Camino. So, how are you doing, Jackie? You all right? I'm good. Lovely to be on your show, Julia. I'm privileged to be (laughs) <laughs> I can't, I'm so so excited about all this, all this going live. I really can't wait. Um, and the interviews I've done so far, some of them have actually got quite emotional, which has just been amazing. So, uh, and I know you've had a very interesting journey because you've not just walked it alone. You've also walked with other people and gone. And I think I don't know about you, but there's certainly a completely different Camino when you walk it on a solo hike. Don't you believe? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So let me ask you the very first question. I always ask at least two questions out of the questions that I sent you, and that's the very first two. And then we'll see where it goes from there, because I know we've got a bit of a script and we have got some questions, but, you know, we're just going to go with the flow. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I'm perfectly happy with going with the flow. That's great. All right. So question number one, then. How did you first hear about the Camino? Do you actually remember that moment? Um, well, I think I heard about it in a number of ways over a number of years. I read a book um, called The Camino by Shirley MacLaine like many years ago, and I was kind of intrigued by her journey and also her spiritual journey. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've also read a book by Paolo Caleo called The Pilgrimage, and also he's a bit out there, of course, but I enjoy I enjoyed that perspective. Um, I then bumped into somebody. It was almost like a series of coincidences. I bumped into somebody, um, an old business colleague in Wallingford, actually where I come from. And when I bumped into him in Wallingford, I think the last time I'd seen him, he'd been pretty stressed with his business. He'd had an awful lot of problems. Um, I think he's had a, had a divorce and you know he was pretty low. And this time when I bumped into him, he kind of had a, a different energy about him. He was excited. Um, he seemed passionate. And I kind of asked him what, what happened. And he told me that he'd just come back from walking the 500 miles of the Camino Frances. And so I asked him a bit more about it. And I felt quite inspired. And so I went away and watched something called The Way, which I think a lot of um, pilgrims will, will uh, allude to, um, a film again that, um, again, was quite inspiring. And I thought, hmm, you know, this could be something I could be interested in actually doing. Absolutely. So that's how I heard it. OK, I didn't I didn't know the story of the guy in Wallingford. So that's that's quite interesting. You actually saw the difference like a before and after as well, which is quite interesting. Well, I knew him in business. So, um, you know, in fact, I'd met him a few years back and he when he was going through quite a hard time and then having seen him again and he looked years younger. And I thought, hmm, what's happened to him? And he was so passionate and so excited about it. And he changed so much that I thought, actually, you know, I've been thinking about this, but maybe maybe it could be something that I would be interested in actually doing. Okay, so, so that, was the, that was the start of it. Let's just do uh, the nuts and bolts, just so that everybody understands the, the routes that you've walked and when you've walked them, just to give some sort of perspective as to uh, how experienced a pilgrim you actually are. So do you want to share that with us? Yeah, I, so I, as a result of um, meeting the chap in Wallingford and the various books I read, I decided to do the first one, which was in 2015, which was the Camino Frances, which is the, the more famous route that most pilgrims do that you, I know you're familiar with. Yeah. <laughs> and I did that one with, at the time, my partner, Matt. So I asked him would he be interested in doing it with me, and we actually did that route together, and that was in 2015. 
and we did it in two parts so we did a first part in may and then the second part in september so we finished okay. it in like two, two separate pilgrimages okay. and then the year after that inspired by that we decided to do another one together and this time we did the whole thing in one go and that was the portuguese camino which was from lisbon to santiago so what what was, is what is that like because i was talking to somebody last night and she was saying that the portuguese route was just not as scenic as she expected even though it is along the coast well, we did the Lisbon, the Lisbon, because coming from the Frances route, which, again, you meet a lot of people. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the experience. You know what it's like. You meet lots of pilgrims. You have lots of stories. You have lots of connections. And we kind of expected a bit of that when we walked the Portuguese Camino. But actually, the first part from Lisbon to Porto was actually, we saw, I think we met three pilgrims. <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> We were staying okay. in all the places and they were, you know, pretty much, you know, we were going to an alberge and, you know, having the whole place to ourselves. You know, we, we, we met a few people, but, but when we got to Porto, that was where most of the pilgrims start. So that was a bit more like the Frances route, a bit more set up for pilgrims. You met more people and it became more like the, the Frances route that eventually led into Santiago. Um, okay. But then the following year. Um, we did the um, Camino, not we did the first part of the Camino Norte, okay. which starts at San Sebastian, and we went halfway along that, aiming to come back and do the second half this year. Um, and um, basically, well, you know the story. Basically, what happened was, uh, despite doing three three Caminos with my partner Matt, um, sadly we we split up last year and. I ended up doing the second half of the Norday on my own, which wasn't okay. planned. But actually, it was, if I had to say which was the absolute best experience, the most spiritual, the most impact on me, even though the others had a great impact, I would say this last one that I've just done on my own was very, very good for me and also for I don't know, just in terms of the spiritual connection and the Norde route is a, is a lovely route. So so that's really my, I've done, well, I suppose 1,200 miles on Caminos now. So, so I'm, a, I'm, I'm well addicted. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> probably addicted it, now to doing it on my own, you know. <laughs> it, is a little bit of, it is a little bit of an addiction. So there's two yeah. things that I, I want to really focus with you because I think a lot of ladies out there, um, are a little bit apprehensive about you know getting on a plane on their own I know I certainly was it was um, a big fear that I had to get over and doing something like that on my own worrying about things like navigation and um, you know safety and stuff like that so we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll unbox that if that's okay yeah um, and you know the what was the other thing I was it's gone out of my head now what the other thing I was going to ask so let's let's talk about that then to start with so how did you feel being um like a, a single female going to do something like that well it was quite different because um when I went with Matt you know like obviously you know it still was a you know powerful experience and we both even though we walked it together we did get on very well and it was um you know I would say it's very positive it sounds negative because we split up it was you know maybe not because of anything major um more complications um than anything major still very sad so i had a very good experience going with someone else who's my best buddy you know we got on very well we had both had our own experience so we traveled well together so i had somebody with me who i got on very well with and we found it very easy to travel together many couples might not um okay. but we did and then did when you, i had did you fall into roles when you was with matt as in you know, was he in charge of sort of like navigation? Are there things that you didn't really need to worry too much that you then had to worry about when you was on your own? Absolutely. So the first thing was, <laughs> you know, the first thing was <laughs> the weight of my rucksack. I mean, I think, um, you know, I had a bit of habit, my kind of overload thing, my theme um, of being overloaded, which, you know, obviously write about quite a lot in my book. Um and this one, I think those both both the stories about overload. So if I am honest, uh, when I had Matt with me, if some things were a little bit too heavy, like the sandwich pack or a few things that I had put in that I shouldn't have perhaps 
put in that rucksack, there was a very strong man there to carry something for me. So yeah. I suppose in terms of being on my own, I had to be more um, astute about what I put in my pack because I knew that I was going to be the only one carrying it. There wasn't any other way to, to get the thing carried. Um, the other thing is, yes, you do tend to fall into roles. I was more the, the booker of accommodation, the finder of a nice room or a nice place for us to stay. Um, you know, kind of I was able more perhaps to go into my um, what I call just – state of flow when we were walking because Matt was always on the plan where we were going to walk to how far we'd gone you know he kept track of that kind of thing sign yeah. and all that and I was very much like quite enjoyed just going into my own little world and so we Being led really yeah <laughs> and we wrote a blog um, a joint blog actually when we were doing but all these routes and we kind of had my perspective and Matt's perspective which was quite different I think um is that is that blog still live it is yeah it, it, people are very welcome to go and and uh, look at that it's it's okay. called jackie matt adventures.com okay. and it, I'll, put, it charts, I'll put a link to that in the show in yeah. the show notes I'm quite happy for people to, sh- to look at that because you know it was it was a positive experience and then going on, <laughs> going on to how it was different you wanted to know how it was different on my own but when it came to me making the decision to go on my own, I must admit I was quite scared of going on my own, especially on the Nor Day because it's not as populated. I had to accept that there might be quite a lot of days when I'd be walking alone. I might not see pilgrims. Um, <laughs> I knew it was quite a hard walk, so there's lots of ups and downs. Um, I knew I'd be carrying my own load, <laughs> so... <laughs> So I had to be very careful about that. And I was also sort of doing something where I had a previous experience of doing it with someone else. So it was a bit sad as well. There was part of me that was kind of like, oh, should I be doing this? Is this is this the right thing to do? Um, but because I love the Camino so much, I needed to have my own experience of it. And my yeah, own. There's a section on the on the Norte where or Norte where it actually joins the French route. Yeah, that's right. So you did you walk the last bit that you'd already walked? And obviously you must have been walking in the footsteps of walking with Matt previously. So that must have been a bit of a challenge. It was. It was I think the only time I felt it a lot was when I actually came into Santiago because all of the kind of ends of the Camino had been with him and this time I was on my own. So I had to I had to deal with that. That was the only time I felt bad about it, if that makes sense. The rest of it was yeah. I mean, for people work, walking on their own, it was it gives you so much um, confidence in yourself that you can do it on your own. Um, I also think that you have a different experience because you have more silence and more um, of the inner journey because you're not dealing with someone else's energy. You're just dealing with your own. Does that make sense? Yeah, completely. I had, I had a lot more... Um, um you know because I'm pretty spiritual so I had a lot more intense feeling of connection with the spiritual side of life you know so I had a lot more of what I call my voice of slow messages insights um connection with nature um really good feeling of uh, peace and happiness you know so I actually felt pretty strong on my own actually to be honest I felt I didn't feel at all nervous even though I was walking quite a lot sometimes on my own you know up a mountain you know through woods there were signs where I got lost uh, there was all sorts um happening I saw those posts you know when you when you did have the, there was a couple of things that you posted because I was following you because literally I was going on the Camino myself um about a week when you was already into it so I was avidly watching all your posts to start with obviously and then I, I joined the Camino as well but there was a couple of occasions where you was like, what do I do here? And there was like a post with an arrow going this way and an <laughs> arrow going that way. And it's like, where am I meant to go? So, do you know, how did you feel when you, you weren't really sure which direction to choose? And it's the same in life, I suppose, you know. Sometimes you yeah. get to these crossroads and, you know, which direction do you go? 
I think there were lots of moments like that because I wrote, I've, I've since put quite a few of my blogs with insights and things on my In Pursuit of Slow website, which you can, you're welcome to share that if you want to. I'll, sh- I'll share the link, definitely. Because they, they're basically, I'm like you, I did those live posts and the live videos, which are, most of those are in my In Pursuit of Slow community, which you're in. Yeah. And I was conscious I didn't want to just be sharing those with everybody because it's only a certain type of person wants what I call my more <laughs> meaningful deep and meaningful spiritual in the moment live as it is insight and I think what happened is um, everything I saw or everything I experienced there was a connection to me personally you know some kind of message you know something I was learning from what what was happening in that moment and you're very I think you're very aware of what happens in the moment on the Camino it's it's for some reason I can't quite get into the same state in my normal daily life as I do when I'm on that long walking journey I think even when you're out for a run or any because I know you you run a lot I do not as strong as doing every day if I was running every day or walking every day I think it's something about the as we talked about the (laughs) eat sleep repeat routine that it gets you into the present moment and all you're thinking about is what you're doing where you're walking what's there the energy how you're feeling and you are so present every day there's no distraction I don't can't put my finger on what it is but there's must be the energy that you get from the route and the state you get yourself into it's like a meditation yeah. you are so open to more and you feel more and you feel more connected and you're not afraid I don't think you're afraid at all I must admit I surprised myself um when I was I was doing a section on this last hike that we did I think I walked a whole day and I didn't think about anything and that's that's really weird usually my head is buzzing with various different ideas and I must have walked about six miles and we got to a cafe and I was talking to two guys and they were saying you know what have you been doing today do you know and I was thinking I don't even recall walking I don't know what I've done (laughs) and it's really hard to explain because I hadn't I I don't did you walk with earphones in or no no I just walk. I just kind of walked with I didn't really I don't listen to anything I like the silence or the or the nature you know I like being around nature I like kind of listening to the brooks and the birds and the things that you don't normally have time to pay attention to and um, <laughs> I think another thing is you almost forget where you've been when people start saying well, where did you walk from and to <laughs> it um, merges into one it's like all merges into one and that was where I missed Matt sometimes because I did miss some signs and I did go into my own world and then realize I'd been walking a long time without looking for the green for the yellow signs I've been following green ones or something (laughs) 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 I had a lot of those kind of oh god you know like and a lot of long days where I'd um perhaps over over egged how far I could go with a big heavy weight on my back and again lots of learning lots of insight for life um which I wrote about every day and yeah it was um I'd say to anyone who was thinking of doing it on their own I think you'd you'd agree with me have the guts to do it because the impact and the feeling you get afterwards is amazing like you feel like you're invincible you can do anything after that I think once you've done that I feel like I could go anywhere in the world on my own I'm certainly up for doing another one next year on my own um I'd almost struggle to decide to do it with somebody again. I think it's a brilliant experience on your own. Yeah, I, well, I, I agree. For me, it was a great experience to do it with my daughter. But um, when I look at I'm going on my fifth Camino in October. And out of all the ones I've done, I've probably got more out of the one for me personally, which was the yeah. one that I actually walked as a solo hike. Um, I don't know why. It's probably because I wasn't mum and I wasn't best friend I was just Julia um, yeah it's, it's it's hard to explain but you can become the real you it's like the real soul and yes. that's what people see does that make sense it totally does because I think that um you the people you meet are really interesting because there'll be people that you kind of connect with um it might be a handful of people it might be people every day it might be somebody you see 
time and time again, but you, you're dealing with them on a very much like soul to soul as opposed to any identity that you have brought with you, either what you do in business, um, whether you're a mum, whether you're a social media <laughs> business guru <laughs> like you or whether you're a business coach like me or, you know, you, you, you haven't got that, those hats on. You're just a, a normal person walking on the route, which is life anyway. That is how it should be. For some reason, we see things through different filters in normal life, I think. We do. We decompent martel. That's not even a word. <laughs> what am I saying? We put things into little compartments when we're when we're in different worlds. As you say, you know, I've got mum mode, I've got work mode, I've got wife mode, I've got yeah. daughter mode. You know, you are you tend to be different people, but when you're on the Camino doing a solo hike, it is just you. There's no pretense. And yeah. you know, and you meet. So t- tell me about your Camino families, because you must have had various different sort of families. And one of the key elements that I think a lot of people get from the Camino is the people that they meet along the way. Um, have there been any people that have really you've really connected with and you felt, oh, my God, you know, I was meant to have met this person? Yes, yeah, so I think there's always a handful. Like there was um, when I went with Matt um, on the first one, we met. Um, we co- um, I think we called them the um, three amigos, and they were three retired guys um, in their early sixties from um, Canada, and okay. one was from Hawaii. And then there was another French guy that we met as well, and um, a, um, a lady from Vicky from Hungary. And we kept bumping into them, so they were all the three amigos walking with the French guy and then Vicky was walking alone and Matt and I just both connected with them as friends um, on a deeper level. Um, We used to have lots of little walks and talks. We, we used to stay in some of the auberges with them and they have carried on being friends. Like we still, well, I I don't know whether Matt does, but I certainly still stay connected with those three and those five. So they were our original people that we met we met lots of other people but they were ones that just became good friends and we had a good connection with yeah and then, um I, we met other people on the second one again we met a, f- a few other people that we we stayed in co- contact with but this time when I went on my own um I didn't meet huge number of people to start with because a lot of the routes you know are more sparse so I met people once and then I didn't meet them again you know, so, okay. so this is on the Norday, uh, yeah. This is on the Norday. So, you know, I didn't, it wasn't like the Camino Frances where you tend to meet lots of people and you keep seeing the same people. I kind of lost the people I met at the beginning. Right. Then I spent about a week maybe on my own just meeting odd people. And then I met a nice group of people again that I connected with. And have stayed in touch with and potentially some of them um, I may be meeting again on a hike that was really special. They were really special people that we ended up having some really deep chats in the evening about various things and also a lot of fun. You know, we had a lot of banter and a lot of laughs and, you know, and that banter. made my Camino you know, quite a good mix of alone time and also some good buddies that so, um, some social times, but yeah, so, I, I don't know about you as well, but sometimes it, it it got a bit like a therapy session, but in a good way. You know, yeah, sometimes and sometimes a walk. I mean, you know, you're walking with, you just catch up with someone, you have a bit of a chat. And the Camino is a sort of place where people build relationships really fast. Um, yeah. And people open up as well really fast. Whether it's because it's like-minded people that walk the Camino or... Um, I don't know, there's none of this judging. And I yeah. don't know about you, but I always felt a little bit awkward saying, oh, you know, why are you walking the Camino? Um, for me, it felt like it was a bit of a personal question. And you shouldn't really ask that until you've got to know that person really well. But other people would just come out and ask me that straight away. Um, and then that was fine. I was quite happy to share the reasons why I, I was walking the Camino. Yeah. How did how did you feel about that? Well, I think it's... um. <sighs> You know, like I'm trying to think of the people that the, the two people that I connected with the most on this recent one 
Um, I met, you know, again, you meet by chance. Chris, I uh, called him St. Chris because he was the one that I bumped into and helped me adjust my very silly heavy pack that I was struggling <laughs> to carry. Well, so quickly, he, quickly tell people about that because that's, that's quite important. If you're thinking of going on the Camino, actually getting your rucksack fitted properly is really yeah. essential. Otherwise, you end up with what you had, which was really painful, like bruised shoulders. Is that right? Yeah, it was basically my, my one of my big lessons in life has been carrying too much and not enjoying the journey because I'm well, the weight's too heavy. So I've got a bit of a story around that, and I know that's one of my issues. And I still went off despite having the lesson, you know, the lesson is talked about in here in this book, <laughs> and also in this one, you know. So it was one that I was kind of very conscious of. So instead of I was going without Matt. I packed my pack. I thought it wasn't very heavy. I put it on. I trained a bit with it. I thought it was okay. But, of course, when I got there and you're doing it every day, it was still too heavy. There were still things that I shouldn't have taken that okay, I didn't like really what? What, what, what sort of things <laughs> did you take that you really well, didn't need? Well, I told you, the I took this. I took an I ended up taking my iPad, which I didn't need. I should have just taken my phone because I wanted to do some writing. And I could have done, I could have used just this, which, you know, you told me about, which is this, you know, that with my phone, which is a little yeah. light keypad. Um, but instead, I, I took a bloody great heavy iPad and a massive power monkey. Power monkey, <laughs> you know, right. I like a charger. Wire, but, yeah, I thought I might run out. And I thought, hold on a minute. I've done two Caminos. Why did I take a huge, great, heavy power monkey with me? <laughs> probably, weigh, probably weighed a kilo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <You know>. wow. <laughs> and anyway, so there were things extra close. Again, there were silly things that I shouldn't have necessarily taken. And the funny thing was, I mean, there was one thing which I told you about, which I know I shouldn't have taken, but it wasn't very heavy. But sometimes it's these little things that add up. You need to share what it was because I must admit when I was walking the Camino and obviously me and Jackie were walking the Camino for a week at the same time, even though it's different parts of it. And there she is using this particular item and I was really jealous. So go for it. Tell people what that luxury item was. It was actually the best thing I did take, which was a tra a small, I haven't brought it here, but it's a small light travel kettle <laughs> <laughs> and a plug on it you know so that was invaluable because nowhere you can get you have to go to a kitchen if you have no burge most of the little pensions that you stay up never have coffee and tea so you can make your tea and coffee um in, in the morning. morning at night green tea at night coffee in the morning y you know it was it, you can imagine can't you just a little slice of heaven and a lot of the Albert unless you're staying in the big like monastery municipal albergers a lot of them don't have kitchens um yes. and you know we sort of upgraded even if we're in like a six bedroom or a four bedroom room and a lot of those smaller hostels don't have kitchens and a lot of the cafes don't open till you know half seven eight o'clock so if you're the sort of person that needs your coffee or injection of coffee first thing in the morning yeah. <laughs> Hence, I was really grouchy until we got to that first cafe to have to have a coffee. Yeah. Cafe Cornetti. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. So, yeah, that was it. Was that one I would take again? But packing, as you know, you're brilliant at this. You're absolutely brilliant. And well, I know you are because you managed to carry eight, or seven, or eight kilos, and I was carrying twelve. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I think. What I did at the end, which is quite funny, on the Nordo route, when I bumped into Chris, who's I call him Saint Chris, uh, he was he he's got an army background, and he actually got hold of me uh, en route, asked me if I was okay about it, but completely fitted my rucksack properly on my back. Now, bearing in mind, I'd already walked for a week in that state, and when he readjusted it, it was so light. I mean, he also had. Um, an Osprey one himself and it was quite a lightweight pack and he showed me exactly how it should be fitted properly which I should have known like why don't I know that but goofing along on my own 
after I'd had a man that I went with before, that was something that I slipped up on. Okay. So, I mean, for, for our audience today, that is really valuable information. Uh, and you can get it. We, I took Rachel, so me and Rachel both went to Cotswold Outdoors. Uh, yeah. And they've got experienced people there who will fit a rucksack for you. And they'll put yeah. um, like uh, weighted bags in the back and they make you walk around the shop and stuff like that. Um, so it, it makes such a difference to make sure that your pack is fitted correctly. Yeah, I'm um, definitely going to do that because that's that was one thing Chris taught me. And if I'm going on another one, well, when I go on my next one, which will be next year, um, I'm definitely going to, you know, one, I'm going to pack a lot lighter. There is no way on this planet I am going with the amount I had in last time. Um, even though it didn't feel as heavy as before, it definitely wasn't as heavy as before, but it was too heavy. And if it's right. too heavy, it, it affects everything. The weight load on your feet, you get more blisters, your shoulders ache. It's just not as enjoyable. It's just miserable. It really is. So, and if you're okay. on your own, if you are on your own, you've got to take responsibility for that. <laughs> so a, a lot of people say, you know, your your true Camino actually starts the minute you actually get home rather than it being sort of on the journey. So did you see any changes in yourself when you got back into like everyday life or did things just go back to the way they were? You don't well, have no, to share that. If you don't want yeah, to. I think I, yeah, I'm more than happy because I think when I did the first Camino, I was feeling certainly my personal life was okay, but my business life was um, a, a bit challenging, and I was feeling um, very under pressure. Um, I was going too fast, trying to do too much. Um, I was working with people that weren't quite right for me in a, in a in a one of the areas of my business, and there were a few things that I was wasn't wasn't working they weren't working for me I was losing that um I don't know when you start feeling like you're losing your mojo for something and I was in that place before I went in 2015 before I went on the first one okay. and it was kind of through that journey from that very first one um the Portuguese one I after the Portuguese one I came and that was what stimulated that book okay. so the book is about the Camino but it's about my journey and um, I called it in pursuit of slow because I was running too fast and I needed to learn the lesson of slow. Right. So it was so it was a lot of the spiritual stuff coming through. And then having gone on this one recently on the Norday uh, on my own, almost to partly recover from a relationship breakup um, and also partly to find some of my own um, strength again. Um, I definitely think I'm definitely living this. I thought about it the other day. I'm definitely living this. Um, and this is a year old, this book. And we're just about to do a second edition, not changing it too much, but I was actually reflecting on how much of that I'm actually living now as opposed to talking about living. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah, so, <laughs> so it's all right in theory, but now you're talk the talk and walk the walk. Yeah, no so I think my inner life has become much more, um, I'm much more congruent, I'm much more authentic, I'm much more at peace. And I definitely do an awful lot more of the in pursuit of slow activities. So I do a lot more walking, running, um, being close to nature and properly connecting. And I run in business with a lighter load, if that makes sense. I don't yeah. I'm working with business owners, so I'm helping them focus and lighten their load. And I'm also, in a way, the way I deal with it, I'm still not carrying as much as I used to. So my mind is a lot clearer. So I would say 100% addicted to the lessons and that I gained from the long distance walking. But I think I'm in a place now where I'm, I've brought them back and I'm properly living. It's taken a while. I wouldn't say it's a quick, it's not a quick fix. It's not going on a <laughs> quick Camino and come right, back. Sorry, three, like three years in the making. Do, don't you feel, though, that now you've done it once, especially on your own, I know that this is how I feel, is that I need that time at least for a week once a year just for me. Um, yeah. So, you know, I feel like I'm going back 
Uh, but I know I'm really looking forward to it. It's like that's that's my time. I suppose it's a bit like people going on a yoga retreat or whatever. Um, but I feel I feel like it it calls me. Like it's really hard to explain, but I feel called to go there every year to just you know replenish something within that, yes. that just gives you. It's a bit like you know the film. Um, you know the film Cocoon. Yes. Have you ever seen it with the old people when they jump into the into the into the pool and then they get all this extra energy that's that's how i feel when i go on the camino i come back from the camino and then it, and then it wears off over a period of time and then i have to go jump back in the pool again um yes so you know it is addictive you, you've used that word a couple of times but it, it is addictive but it's i think it's a good addiction to have yeah definitely i mean i think um um i'm doing I'm planning to possibly do, I'm thinking about doing the, there's a French route, um, about 500. I can't remember exactly where it starts, but I'm speaking to someone about it. And it's 500K from somewhere in France to the start of Saint-Jean, where the French okay. start. So some people start there, then they join and do the French route. And I, I had this Is it Le, P- Le Puy, is it? Somewhere like that, yeah. yeah. And um, when I think about doing that, I'm thinking it's almost I'm, I get excited about it. I, I've got this kind of like it's massively exciting for me to think about doing that. And I have absolutely no fear of doing it on my own. I haven't got to wait till I meet some some guy that I can go with or, yeah. you know. And I think. Um, it sort of gives you the confidence in life to, to conquer other things as well. And to be OK with, on your own as well, because. I think you kind of think you've got to have someone with you all the time doing these things. You can't possibly do them on your own. And a lot of women might think like that, that it's okay or my partner's not interested or, um, you know, I can't go on my own because, you know, I've recently had a breakup bit like me. I nearly thought like that. And I thought, hold on a minute. Yes, you can. And it empowers you to think actually not just you can, but you actually enjoy it and you enjoyed it more on your own. That's the other thing. (laughs) <laughs> do you, do you, you know, think so, i mean you're, you're quite fit as well so do you think the camino is something that people have to be super fit to do or i don't think so because i think um i am you you set your own as you know you set your own daily distances and you could go on it and do 5k a day or 10k a day if you wanted to you just take longer to do a route or you could go for a week or you could go for a week and then join it and do another week yeah. Um, I did about, I think I was like you, about 20 miles a day, 18, 20 miles a day or 30K, 30 to 35K a day. It would have been easy if I hadn't had a heavy pack to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so I think if you're doing, if you're sending your There's pack a message off, there, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's not about a race, is it? It's about Enjoying the experience. The it doesn't matter how, whether it's, you walk 5k and, and that's your distance or you walk 10k people of all ages do it and I think you do need to train a little bit though so how did you feel obviously you carried your pack and you must have been in quite a bit of pain before you met Chris St Chris yeah um, <laughs> so did you not think of using the luggage transfer service if things were heavy well it was an interesting story connected with that one because it was advertised at some of the places, but I nearly sent some stuff to Santiago and then I kind of thought, hold on a minute, I might need that. And so I didn't. And then when it got to, I think I had this thing, or oh, I've got to carry my load a bit like in life. I, I can't, I can do it. You know, that kind of stupid stuff. I'm going to be a um, true pilgrim. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be pain. You're going to be in pain. To... So when I got to the end, I think it was about two days before the end we got into, we went to an auberge and there was a big sign on the wall saying luggage carried. And because I booked a hotel in Santiago, I thought, well, actually, why don't I send my pack on now and have two days without anything? Just to see what it feels like to walk freely for two days. And yeah. so I took a day pack and I literally took a tiny amount of stuff out of the pack that I needed and sent the pack on. I walked with this tiny little pack. It was amazing. (laughs) (laughs) It felt amazing. And I never missed a thing. 
<laughs> you didn't need you didn't need all the stuff. No, I took, but I did take the kettle though out of it. You did. Was that in your small pack? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and my book. And, and your book. So yeah, we all have, we all have priorities at the end of the day. Okay. Yeah. So Jackie, would you you don't again you don't have to answer this, but would would you say you're a, a religious person? Or? Um, I would describe myself as say religious, but I'm spirit. You know, I have spiritual beliefs. So um, you know that I believe in something greater, something, you know, the, the power of the universe, the great spirit. So I'm a, a spiritual, a spiritual believer, a spiritual person. So Okay. And they talk about on the Camino, you have um, what we call thin places where the spiritual world is sometimes can merge a little bit where we're on equal pain, planes. Um, and I know I certainly felt it when I you know, was walking through certain woods or I'd hear something and look behind those be absolutely nobody there. Um, but not in a spooky way at all, just in quite a peaceful, comfortable way. Did yeah. you have any experiences like that at all, if you're in oh. tune to the spiritual side? Well, yes, because my first, um, I think I talk about it right in this this book that, I don't know if you've read that one, but there's the story of the um, of hearing the voice of slow, you know, the, the first of hearing the voice, um, <laughs> so the voice, and it was you know, the one where I think on one of the Caminos I was walking alone with my heavy pack and it was the beginning of my journey and it was one of those moments where I was sick of myself, you know, I suddenly realised that I was, all I'd done was go somewhere to escape from the overload and I'd carried it with me. So okay. I was in the middle of nowhere and I threw my pack down and screamed at it and, and then asked for help, you know. <laughs> as you do when you're alone in a field and you're sick of your pack and actually at that moment I was actually sick of myself because I'd realized I was still at fault all I'd done was was go somewhere else to think I was going to have an experience but actually I was carrying it with me and it was then that I heard this this is kind of voice and I wasn't sure whether it was from inside or outside but I heard this voice and the the message was um that I heard was have the courage to let go of, of that which no longer serves you. So I heard that Ooh. it was kind of, it was like a soft whisper, like have the courage to let go of that which no longer serves you. And that was the moment, because I was on, on my own at the time then, and I actually reflected on that a lot. I mean, I still do, and it's so strange how, that was the start of it because I then at that point okay I'm still carrying a he talking about heavy pack but bit by bit I've been letting go of that and also in life since walking the Camino I've let go of quite a lot of um of the things that that were causing me stress that I didn't quite have the courage to let go and funny some of the things that weren't serving me have let go of me as well so it's been it's definitely been a theme and I think from that point, once my mind cleared, I definitely have more, um, which I shared on the um, in my in, in pursuit of slow community. Those messages, those insights, were coming on a regular basis. You know, I'd suddenly be going along and they come through you, sort of thing. It's as if they came from somewhere else, and you just felt you had to share them. them. Exactly, it came through, and I had that urge to let it out and okay. had more of those on the Camino all of the routes than I have in normal life I'm not able to get in the same I, I sometimes do if I go out walking for a day or I'm running long distance you know I have to go and run you know half half marathon <laughs> to get for some reason it seems to be able I seem to be able to get in that place when I'm my mind is clear yeah uh, it's filled with lots of other stuff I can't quite get in the same state zone yeah it's a zone the openness to to receive I think cool okay yeah. so just say that line again because I think that's not just a message just for you I think that's a really good message for anyone that's listening here yeah it's have the courage to let go of that which no longer serves you you need to have the courage to let go of that which no longer serves you 
And I think letting go is a huge lesson for many of us that for some reason are hanging on to things that we know um, are not good for us. us. Yeah. Not good for our soul. They might be good for our ego, but we're not feeling connected with them anymore. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's strange you said that. So literally when we came back from this Camino, the week after, um, I went to Ireland to see my dad and um, we did a similar sort of thing and I, I let go of a lot of stuff while I was over there. Um, right. But I probably would not have done that if, if I hadn't have just walked the Camino for very similar reasons. Um, it's yeah. excess baggage at the end of the day and you know sometimes you just need to sever it. And, yeah. you know, that might be um, a friend, it might be work colleagues, it, it might be negative Nellies, what we call it in the industry. <laughs> yeah. Or it could be family, you know, and you know, sometimes these things are like dragging you down. And if you don't, you know, let it go and snip those ties sometimes, you know, you can't fly, fly free. So I, I think I'm that was a really, really good message. I'm still letting go because people ask, you know, some, someone asked, I think, in my In Pursuit of Slow community the other day, um, I was writing some posts about letting go. Um, and they were asking, well, sometimes you think you've let go, but actually you realise you haven't. And you have to keep almost going through this process of letting go bit by bit because sometimes you're not ready to let yeah. go from Sometimes it can take time and you need to let go step by step. A bit like my load that I was carrying, because I've let go bit by bit of the stuff that I thought I needed. And it was still weighing me down, even on the last journey, until I got to the end when I let the pack go on. I gave myself permission to be free for a couple of days. And in, in a way, that's psychologically important. You have to give yourself yeah. permission sometimes to let go. Yeah. And carried the small pack. I enjoyed my journey more and I felt lighter and freer. So I've carried that feeling back to my work and I'm freeing myself up quite a bit more with my work, doing things differently, working with different people, using, you know, technology like this to make life easier a bit for myself. And also in my personal life, you know, I've got a tendency to hang on. <laughs> especially when it's emotional things, people. I'm terrible at letting go of people. Yeah. And, again, it has to be something, you know, you really have to kind of go inside and realise what impact you're having on both yourself and others by hanging on to for too long. And so letting go, not being attached and being true to yourself has been, you know, quite a lot of my, my own personal journey. And it's come from the seed of the Camino. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, you just reminded me of, we had a, a whole Camino family that was walking that very last couple of miles into Santiago. And I can just visualise you know, Anna and, and a few others. And we were singing, you know, the song from Frozen? Let it oh, go, yeah. let it go. <laughs> and we were singing that as we was coming through the woods. And I, it just come into my head um, because we was all doing a very similar sort of thing. Um, yeah. and it's just the worst thing is though that <laughs> don't buy a load of stuff as soon as you get to Santiago <laughs> and I think everyone does that but then you carry in more crap sorry there was a, a lady um, that I met you know as one of the amigos that we were walking with I was walking with um, on this last route way and she wrote recently to me to say she's got to go on another one because she hasn't finished letting go you know so I think <laughs> <laughs> we keep going back and each time our journey might be about more things that we need to let go of in order to find the 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 true you you know the real you underneath that actually doesn't need all this stuff yeah and that's that, is, big that is true that is so true i mean you've, you've given us some really good things to think about as well um, if you had a message for anyone who's you know, perhaps thinking about it, perhaps it's a solo female that is thinking about going on the Camino, do you have any messages? What would you, what would you say to that person? I would say have the courage to just do it because it will be probably the most impactful thing and important thing you could do for your life. I think if you've got a calling, if something is saying do it, um, 
listen to the do it message as opposed to the uh, oh yes but and go out there and just go for it even if it's just for a week to start with or two weeks have the courage to go and do it because it will be it will have a massive massive impact just so book the flight. That's the first thing. If you, you even if you just book the flight, and they're not expensive from the UK, um, book the flight. You've got that date, and then you can work up to it. Then, so um, I think that's that's a really good message. So just do it, Jackie says. Go yeah. for it. Have the courage. Um, <laughs> uh, Jackie's mentioned the book a few times, but I will put links to that underneath. So it's In Pursuit of Slow, da da, um, and the other book. That's that one, and the other one. That's- that's my Camino walk. Is my Camino walk number one? I think number two's out as well now, isn't it? Uh, yeah, okay. and a number Wait. three's come. Oh, is it excellent? Okay, there okay. So we'll we'll get Andrew on as well. Um, and, and you can get both of those books on Amazon. I'm assuming. Yes, you can. Yeah, Amazon. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Right. That all that leaves me to say is thank you so so much for joining us today. It's been really appreciated. And thank you for being so honest and and transparent in the things that you've said. I know you've shared with us some personal journeys uh, that you've gone through as well, which I know is not always easy, uh, but it's it's really appreciated. So thank you very much. Thank you, Pilgrim. Pleasure. And all that leaves me to say is one Camino. Yeah, thank you, Julia. (laughs) It's been great talking to you. So, um, yeah, and good luck with, um, with this. And we'll talk soon. We will definitely talk soon. We'll get a date in that diary. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Take care. Okay. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.